Right now, on to the point. Strangers in our community are just people we haven't had the chance to meet yet. Volunteers and homeless advocates walking Sacramento streets, trying to provide a snapshot of the homeless crisis, why it's needed. Vice President Kamala Harris is in Sacramento, her message ahead of this year's election. The U.S. Secretary of Veterans Affairs is in town. I'm talking with him about homeless veterans, a controversial new lawsuit filed against the VA, and more. Plus, the CEO of Boeing testifying on Capitol Hill, just as his planes in question go back up in the air again. Good evening, this is To The Point, and I'm Alex Bell. Around Sacramento County, unhoused people are living in tents, cars, RVs, even sleeping bags. And in all of these, there is a person, someone who wants to be seen, someone that wants to be heard. And right now, that's not the reality for the more than 9,000 unhoused people in our community. And that number could be changing. Every other year, Sacramento County conducts a point in time count, also known as the pit count. And volunteers count and collect information from the unhoused community. And last night, To The Point was there. I decided to volunteer because in order to have public health interventions that help the community, you need to know who's out there. These people just need to be seen and loved on. And we're out there to count them and that's a big deal. And we need to help the homeless in Sacramento. It's a huge issue. On a cold, windy and rainy evening, volunteers piled into a room at the Sacramento State Campus to pick up their name tags and orange safety vests for Sacramento's point in time count. For communities to receive federal funding for homelessness, every other year they're required to conduct the point in time count to get an accurate snapshot of how many people are experiencing homelessness. We know that this is not perfect uh, way to, to count the unhoused population, not in Sacramento, not in any other uh, community throughout the country, but it's the best we got. And it's inc incredibly important that we get it right. The count is vital. The data collected from it determines not just how much federal funding our community gets to address the homeless crisis, but it also helps inform decision making and resources at the local and state level helping paint a better picture of finding effective solutions. Lisa Bates, the CEO of Sacramento Steps Forward, a private nonprofit and leading agency of the Pitt Count, says once her team is able to sift through the data, resources people want often present themselves. One of the things that surprised us during COVID was the fact that um, when we were able to offer non-congregate shelter, motels through Project Room Key, we saw a tremendous uptake in the number of longtime people who are unsheltered and homeless accepting those services and coming in. So it spoke to us that if you offer the right types of resources for people, that then you see their willingness to engage in those services and to come in and, 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 and seek uh, support. More than 800 people signed up to volunteer in this year's pit count, deploying across Sacramento in places like Elk Grove, Rancho Cordova, Folsom and Citrus Heights. We joined a group of volunteers for night one in the two day count. With our sign mapped out areas, we walked to the streets, neighborhoods and bike path counting people, tents and cars, getting a chance to also spend some time with the unhoused folks and hopefully get more information from them through a roughly 10 minute survey. One man we met shares that he's been living under a bridge after losing his job. Three months and were you homeless before that? Um, no, I had an apartment, but I lost a job and lost a job. and you know, just couldn't pay rent. While nobody we met wanted to go on camera, they did want to share their voices. It's just hard when every day we struggle to feed ourselves every day. The questions we asked range from mental health struggles to... How long have you been homeless this time? A couple of years. How many times in the last four years have you been in a shelter? Never. We learned that for one volunteer, Cynthia, counting people was important, but letting people know someone is there to help is everything. It's important that we stand up for them and have a voice because they matter. They're human beings and it's important that we show up um, for our community. Cynthia shared her own story of struggling with addiction and homelessness. I don't want to be victimized, so I would sneak into abandoned houses and sleep in the closet. Now she's 25 years sober and for decades has been working at Cottage Housing Inc., a local program that connects people to stable housing and a range of services to help people get back on their feet and find a second chance. I believe in giving back what was freely given to me. You know, people cared about me when I didn't know how to care about myself. 
And I do want to mention that it will take a few months to calculate this year's homeless count, but there are some takeaways from past years. So in 2019, before the pandemic, volunteers counted 5,570 people experiencing homelessness throughout Sacramento County. Then in 2022, volunteers counted 67% more people, which brought us to a total of 9,278 individuals. Tonight, we're also getting a closer look at how many unhoused people are dying in Sacramento. A new report suggests that one homeless person dies every two days. Of that, the Sacramento County Coroner's Office says 250 people experiencing homelessness died just in 2022. The Sacramento Regional Coalition to End Homelessness issued their own report on homeless deaths, saying almost 60% occur in the fall and winter months like we're in right now. The average age of homeless men is 50 years old, and sadly, the average age of death for a homeless woman in our community is only about 47. Which is why Earl and Bush agrees that the point in time count is vital to understand where people are experiencing homelessness and saying what they need. All right, and coming up a little bit later in the show, the U.S. Secretary of Veterans Affairs participated in the point in time count what he has to say about homeless veterans and the expansion of veterans benefits through the PAC Act. All right, now to the 2024 election. Vice President Kamala Harris just left the capital city after landing in Sacramento this morning and addressing elected leaders. Our Alicia Machado has been covering the vice president's visit and has what she had to say about the upcoming election. The vice president of the United States of America, Kamala Harris. Vice President Kamala Harris visited California's capital city Thursday, raising funds to support her and President Joe Biden's campaign as the 2024 election season heats up. She greeted supporters after landing at Sacramento International Airport before traveling downtown to the Leland Stanford mansion. It's good to be home. Harris, a lifelong Californian, delivered a speech at a California state legislature Democratic caucus reception. But it is certainly good to be back home and to be in a place that really is a heartbeat of so much that happens in our beautiful state. Harris addressed state and local leaders as she highlighted the Biden administration's efforts on a number of topics, from climate change to infrastructure and helping aging Americans. Our seniors have been having to make a choice of whether they could fill their refrigerator or fill a doctor's prescription. And we finally got it so that Medicare can finally negotiate drug prices for our seniors and cap that cost at $2,000 a year. Harris also stressed the importance of the upcoming election. On the one side, you've got a former president who openly applauds dictators. On the other side, you have in Joe Biden, and what we have accomplished as an administration, competence, compassion, skill, and performance. Harris's visit was met with protests. Harris, Harris, speak aside. Harris, speak aside. He's fire genocide. A group calling for her to take action in Gaza as the death toll rises. They stood in the street across from the mansion as the event went on, but not all were welcoming to their demonstration. A car drove through the line of protesters. And Vice President Harris has also been visiting the Los Angeles area for fundraisers as we get closer to the election. In other news tonight, two people have been arrested after a shooting in Sacramento's Oak Park neighborhood. It happened Wednesday morning, leaving one man dead. A 28 and 38 year old were arrested and are now in jail. The person killed has yet to be identified. And PG&E is paying another penalty, this time over its role in the 2021 Dixie Fire. The CPUC says the company will have to pay $45 million in penalties, with $2.5 million going to tribes impacted by the fire. Now, investigators say the fire started when a tree fell and struck the company's equipment. The Dixie Fire burned nearly 1 million acres before it was contained. PG&E sent us a statement saying, in part, PG&E is committed to making it right and making it safe for our customers and hometowns. We will not request rate recovery for these expenses, so these costs will not impact customers. The agreement does not preclude PG&E from receiving cost recovery for costs related to the fire, including from the state's wildfire fund. 
Tonight, a new affordable housing project is open in Modesto. The expansion project called Archway Commons 2 is funded by the state and the city of Modesto, and it brings 74 new affordable apartments to that existing project, which opened actually back in 2013. Organizers say it will help serve those who are in between 30 and 60 percent of the area median income. The area also has a new bike path and bus routes to take residents to shopping areas, schools and downtown. And while this new project, it is full, the city says that they do have plans to open another project downtown coming up later this year. All right, after the break, the, the man in charge of Veterans Affairs in our area answering our questions, addressing homeless veterans and benefits. In weather, we're tracking another weather system trying to press its way inland. How much rain we're anticipating heading towards the weekend. And new details in that Alaska Airlines mid-air scare. The CEO of Boeing in the hot seat as planes in question are about to head back up into the air. We fly safe planes. We don't Easy put guys. airplanes in the air that we don't have 100% confidence in. Welcome back, Chief Meteorologist Monica Woods with our forecast. Are you feeling blue today, Monica? I know, right? <laughs> I shouldn't because we had beautiful blue skies. I know, I'm, I'm I know. not blue depressed wise. <laughs> yeah, we saw the sunshine for today. Clouds starting to stream in right now. Showers trying to press their way inland, but the deal is it's generally going to stay north of us and through the central and northern part of the Sacramento Valley and even farther north towards the border. So for tonight, we'll pick up the cloud cover. Temperatures staying fairly steady, right around 45 to 50 degrees. Average low is 40, and we just really aren't seeing those cold, crisp mornings, primarily because we've been in this on and off again rainy pattern through much of January. Temperatures for today warming to near 60 for the valley, 50s for the foothills and 40s for the Sierra. We are going to get some nice spring warmth in here, especially through the end of the weekend. Early next week, highs close to 70 for many of us in the valley. But then, just like that, we turn the leaf over to February and we're likely cooler and likely wetter throughout the entire state. So we've got a couple nice warm spring like days in here for part of the weekend. The weekend starts, by the way, with this slight chance of showers, mainly right north of I-80, more so though towards that California, Oregon border. Just a really slim chance of a light sprinkle coming in on Saturday morning. And then we're dry to start off the work week, but there's that weather system poised off the coast that's really going to open things up for more wet weather heading our way. Highs near 50 tomorrow for that Friday forecast in the Tahoe Basin, 50s and 60s for the foothills with 60s along the coast and we'll carry that inland as well. What a beautiful way to wrap up this work and school week. Now we do see some unsettled weather coming in late Friday, early Saturday, mainly north of I-80. And then we really start to open up that storm door by the middle of next week. As we welcome in February, it is wet and cold. All right, Monica, thank you so much. After the break, the man in charge of Veterans Affairs in our area answering our questions, addressing homelessness and veterans benefits. Plus, what the CEO of Boeing is saying just days before hundreds of planes are going back in the air. And former President Donald Trump back in court today taking the stand. Right now, the U.S. Secretary of Veterans Affairs is in our area, and he actually participated in last night's point in time count of Sacramento County's homeless population to call attention to homeless veterans. And he's touring the Northern California VA Medical Center at Mather. Rebecca Habegger is there. While in town for the point in time count, the secretary is also stopping by some VA facilities, including the one here at Mather. I just got out of a news conference where I asked the secretary about homeless veterans and separately a controversial new lawsuit filed against the VA. Here's what he had to say. U.S. Secretary of Veterans Affairs Dennis McDonough says addressing homelessness among American veterans is a priority of his. We are very dedicated to getting the number of homeless veterans in America to zero. He participated in Sacramento County's point in time count Wednesday night where he saw the issue firsthand. And yesterday we found 16 homeless veterans. When we find those veterans, we will get them into housing and into the care for the issues that led to housing in the first instance as soon as possible, oftentimes that night and surely within the next couple nights. 
And new on Thursday, the Transgender American Veterans Association filed a lawsuit against the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, accusing the VA of leaving transgender veterans waiting for promised coverage of gender-affirming surgery, something both President Biden and Secretary McDonough have said the VA will cover. The VA has been in the rulemaking process for this change for two and a half years, so I asked the Secretary about a timeline. I'm not going to comment about any legal matters, but I will repeat what I've said, which is that uh, this is... Uh, important care for our veterans, and we will provide it as we've announced that we will. I don't have an update on the timing for that, but we will provide the care. I also asked the secretary about the PACT Act, something ABC 10 has been covering. In 2022, President Biden signed legislation expanding eligibility for VA health care and benefits to more veterans exposed to burn pits, Agent Orange, and other toxic substances while they served. That's the beauty of the new law. No longer requires the veteran to go through an onerous process of providing uh, evidence. It's now on us to build the case for evidence for the veteran. So far, uh, we're doing that in a very meaningful way, having very real impact on veterans and on survivors across the country. He says under the PACT Act, hundreds of thousands of more veterans are eligible for VA health care and benefits. You can find more information at abc10.com slash links. We turn now to former President Donald Trump, who took the stand in the civil defamation trial against him in New York City. He testified for just three minutes, claiming that sexual assault allegations against him were false. And the trial will determine how much he must pay writer E. Jean Carroll in damages. She's seeking at least $10 million in damages, saying that Trump shattered her reputation and made her the target of violent threats after he denied her sexual assault accusations in 2019. Closing arguments are set for Friday. In the meantime, uh, Trump White House official Peter Navarro was sentenced today to four months behind bars for refusing to cooperate with a congressional investigation into the January 6th Capitol attack. And Navarro was found guilty of defying a subpoena for documents and a deposition from the House January 6th Committee. He served as a White House trade advisor under then-President Donald Trump and later promoted the Republicans' baseless claims of mass voter fraud in the 2020 election. He is the second Trump aide convicted of contempt of Congress charges. Tonight, new details surrounding the investigation into that Alaska Airlines mid-air scare just earlier this month. The FAA is now clearing the way for the MAX 9 jets to resume flying as early as this weekend. And it comes as the company's CEO is on Capitol Hill today answering questions from lawmakers. Ike Jachi has more. The FAA releasing its final instructions for airlines to ensure those planes are repaired and safe. A 12-hour inspection process to examine MAX 9s. The agency laying out an enhanced maintenance process, which will require, among other things, an inspection of specific bolts, guide tracks, and fittings, and detailed visual inspections of left and right mid-cabin exit door plugs. Each of the airlines will make sure that these four bolts are properly installed and tighten. Boeing will be helping wherever necessary, but each of these airlines knows that their reputation is on the line to make sure that those airplanes are safe to fly. United saying it's putting the planes back in the air by Sunday, with Alaska Airlines saying their 65 MAX 9 jets will be up Friday. All this following three weeks of investigations into that door plug that flew off the Alaska Airlines flight 16,000 feet in the air. Boeing still facing scrutiny. The FAA telling the company it can't expand on production of the MAXs beyond what's already being built until there's a full investigation. Meanwhile, Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun voluntarily traveling to Capitol Hill, taking tough questions from senators. We fly safe planes. We don't Easy put guys. airplanes in the air that we don't have 100% confidence in. Reporters asking Calhoun about a Seattle Times report claiming that the door plug was actually last installed by Boeing, not the fuselage manufacturer Spirit Aerosystems. Thank yeah. that no, thanks so Cal. much. And Calhoun was back on Capitol Hill today fielding more questions from lawmakers. He's also expected to take part in a public hearing in the coming weeks. Next on To The Point, rethinking health care, the non-traditional routes more doctors are taking to connect with patients. Sitting in a waiting room at the doctor's office can feel endless just for you to get to the appointment and then just feel rushed. Well, it turns out that doctors feel that stress too. So coming up tomorrow on to the point, we hear from a doctor who's leaving a traditional hospital 
for a new kind of practice. It's actually called concierge medicine, and it gives patients 24-hour access to their doctors, day of appointments, and longer visit times. The pandemic really just highlighted that or exacerbated a problem that was already present. Coming up tomorrow, right here on To The Point, we hear from her about why she's doing it and how more doctors are taking similar approaches. Before we go, I know we talked a lot about homelessness in our community, and I just want to circle back to what one of the volunteers said when we were at the pit count last night. She said, strangers in our community are just people we haven't had the chance to meet yet. And that really stuck with me, so I hope it sticks with you. Take the time to get to know someone new. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Hey, it's Alex. Just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I really love hearing from everyone and I hope that you'll stay in touch. Reach out to me on Facebook at Alex Bell TV, or you can email me at to the point at abc10.com or you can even send me a text message at 916-321-3310.